Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the catio this morning. Loki's always the first one out. <laughs> he loves to come out here. Um, everybody just finished up their breakfast. It's a little chilly out here this morning. I think what I'm going to do with my catio chats is... Uh, I'm going to, uh, instead of doing them early, early in the morning, beer's coming out, I'm going to, um, as it gets colder and the weather gets messier, I'm going to um, do them like later on in the morning or even in the day when it's warmer. The kitties, uh, after a while, they won't really want to come out here when it's really cold in the morning. Loki in his new haircut. I think he's really liking it. Yeah, so, um, I was trying to think of something that I could talk about this morning, and I, I thought, uh, some of you might find this interesting. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history on me going way back when I was two years old and you're probably wondering why is she taking us back that far it's my about my life with pets I guess but I want to go back to when I was two because I want to tell you about this house that I lived in I grew up in in a little place called Canning it's in uh, eastern Nova Scotia um, it's called Canning right now, but back when the house was built that I grew up in, it was called um, Apple Tree Landing. That was the name of the town. Um, <laughs> so, um, I moved into this house with my family when I was two years old. Um, and, and thus the beginning of my life with pet, pets and cats. But um, the house is interesting and it's always in intrigued me. So the house I grew up in was built in the early 1760s by a man named Stephen Loomer. And Stephen Loomer was in Connecticut. Um, apparently, he had this house built and... Um, he had it, uh, sh he was immigrating to Nova Scotia from Connecticut, so he had this house built, and um, it was made of uh, post and beam construction, and what they did was they, they had parts of it built, and they shipped it up the eastern seaboard on schooners in giant pieces. So this is a pretty big house. I've always found that so interesting. Um, I'm trying to remember the style of the house. I can't remember what it's called. But what I'm going to do is, if you're interested in reading about it, I'm going to put the link in my um, <laughs> in my uh, community post, and, and you can actually go and, and read the article about the house. It's really interesting. So, um, yes, I lived there from right until... <laughs> adulthood with uh, we had a hobby farm there actually we had horses and uh, goats when I was growing up and um, all kinds of cats and dogs but the house was amazing it, the foundation was built on what they call field stones they're giant they're as big as a car and I can remember when I was little going down into the basement it was a dirt floor basement these giant, giant boulders that the house is sitting on. I try to imagine back then in the early 1760s when they were building this place. It was the first house there. It would have been just wild um, trees and forest. And uh, they would have had to use oxen, I suppose, and draft horses to dig it and to dig this giant, giant foundation and then move these giant boulders into the basement. It's always just really intrigued me. Um, I think it was called Dutch Colonial. I know it's in the uh, article that I'll, I will post for you if you want to read it. 
it's pretty interesting um yeah so i can remember going in when i was a little kid going up in the attic of this old house you could see the numbers the beams were numbered i think it was roman numerals and it was just to uh so they would know how to put the house back together when it actually got here yeah so i th i thought you might find that interesting they don't do things like that anymore can you imagine seeing a giant house on a schooner vessel coming up the eastern seaboard? I think that would be just incredible. So, um, yes, I had cats and horses and goats um, at that big old house. It was a wonderful place to grow up. It had all kinds of neat little hideaways in it. One of the uh, closets... Um, in the house had a, a secondary little door in the back of the closet where you and it was only big enough for a child you could go in under the staircase and there was this really neat little room in there i used to go in there and play a lot <laughs> yeah so anyway the house is still sitting where it's always been there's uh, someone had bought it a long time ago and fixed it up it's it's a heritage home now um, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, built in the early 1760s. That's the house I grew up in. So I'll post that link later on today if anyone's interested. Well, I only see Luna out here now. I don't know where everybody else went to. <laughs> it might be a little bit cold for Loki. <laughs> I'm not sure. He actually does have a nice thick layer of fuzz on him. It's not bare skin, so he's doing all right. We just, we just have Miss Luna out here today. I'm going to check to see if anybody's inside. Oh, and here's Mr. Bear at the water fountain. Hi, Bear. You're going out? Here he is. Yeah, this is getting cold in the mornings. I'm surprised Miss Luna's being such a brave girl. You. Hi, Loki. Hey there, Loki. He's feeling really frisky with his new coat, new haircut. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's necessary to uh, shave them and start over. It's just so tedious and it's painful for them to demat them and. I'm glad I did. Did what I did for him. I loved his coat though, so I'll be happy to see his coat come back in too. Oh, it's pretty playful. He likes that tube. <laughs> Look at his back feet. <laughs> Good boy, Yogi. There he is. <laughs> I would say Loki's a little bit frisky this morning. <laughs> he wants to play with his game while he's in the tube. So we'll just... He loves trackball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would say that's probably a wrap on Catio Jack. Oh. <laughs> So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.